Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to the um, pool and format reveal show presented to you by New York Union Islanders. Uh, they, were they were gracious enough to have myself and uh, one of the goats of defense, if not the goat of defense in many people's mind, uh, Hasnain Gigi alongside us. Chai with Munna, lifted, a little bit of a collab brought to you again by New York Union Islanders. Thank you so much, Bode, for having us here, the chairman of New York Union Islanders. Bode, I'm going to leave it to you. I'm sure everyone's been waiting. Everyone's been looking forward to this. Everyone's been biting their nails and the anxiety is at the all-time peak now. Um, so I'm going to leave it to you, man. You do your thing, and then we'll come back in and give us give you a little bit of our takes. Okay, thank you, Soman. Yeah, look, it's uh, less than a week away now. You know, it's uh, we're on the home stretch. Obviously, a lot of work, a lot of preparations gone into this, and uh, and we're really, really excited. I guess before I jump in, just a couple of quick things. First of all, I, I want to thank all the players and the participants who are coming. You know, maybe two, three, four years ago, I think we'd all agree volleyball was at somewhat of a crossroads, you know, which way are we going? But here we are, you know, 30 teams. And so this would not be possible without everyone's support, all the players, participants, um, everyone's coming. So, you know, re uh, realistically, the ball's in our court now. You know, everyone's done their part. It's up to us to to put on a show now. So so we're ready. We're excited um, and looking forward to it. Second, Salman, also for you, you've obviously been uh, promoting the tournament for us. You know, so we thank you for that. You know, all the podcasts, the interviews has been great. Um, so we really, really appreciate it. New York's your home. Uh, we're excited to have you here as well. Um, and, and, and looking forward to, to having you back on uh, at Sports Time. Appreciate that. And then lastly, look, you know, a lot, a lot of work, like you said, goes behind the scenes. And, uh, and none of this is possible without all of our well-wishers and supporters. For us in New York, it starts with the Gigi Mirali family, right? So Hasnain, Muna Uncle, thank you for your continued support. As long as I've been playing, all the tournaments have been called the late Gigi Mirali tournament. 2024, Memorial Day is no exception. So we continue the tradition. Um, and so, you know, thank you for your, your support as always. I'm going to start with just listing out a few of our um, supporters, well-wishers. Um, they're all listed here. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but I do want to call out our platinum sponsors, the ASR uh, family. So all ASR Office Solutions, the Dinani family, Gigi Mirali family, and uh, Visual City, followed by our diamond, gold, and silver sponsors. So I'm not going to read every single one. There's a good number here, but thank you to everyone that has supported and made this possible for us. Okay, so with that, let's jump in. So first thing, first things first, let's get some of the um, the uh, the rules out of the way. First is the Islamic rules. Uh, maybe a few months ago, there was a circular that was sent out, which was really coming from the office of uh, Aga Sistani, going around mixed gatherings and tournaments and stuff. And so, look, we have to do our part. Um, so what we've done this time, hopefully it sets a precedence for future tournaments, uh, but we've put together some guidelines around how the tournament will work. Uh, it's not something that's drastically going to change everything overnight. Obviously, our women, men are welcome to join. Uh, but what we've done is we've taken some measures, separate entrances. So we'll have entrances that will be specific for women and men are separate. Uh, separate seating areas as well. So, you know, for those listening, we ask you to cooperate. We'll have signs and dedicated areas for women and men. Obviously, both can watch, both can see there. Uh, and separate food areas as well, which is, again, we, we usually do this anyway, but, you know, this time we'll, we'll just have it more explicit and clear for everyone to see. And lastly is the dress code. Um, you know, for women, obviously, uh, modest clothing, hijab is recommended. And for the player, the men's as well. So, you know, for those of you, for those of us, or not me, some of us on our team wear, you know, really, really short shorts, you know, just try to be cognizant of this. 
uh, where where either a uh, you know something inside or slightly longer shorts. The recommendation we have from our resident alim here is just try to get to your knee uh, cover up to the knees area. This is yeah. mostly for uh, Durab, Abbasali, Morali, those guys, right? Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. If... Again, whether uh, this is this is we we are following guidelines here that uh, we're doing our part. So you know. Just keep it in mind and try to try to go through it as much as possible. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's get through some of the actual rules now. Uh, there's some pretty standard rules. I'm not gonna spend too much time. Ball pressure is 11 and a half, court is 34 by 34, net is eight feet high. Majority of players have been to sports time before. Um, there's a five foot line, pretty standard here, nothing too crazy. Uh, one thing to note, um, the referees, all teams will have to referee. So, you know, you have to referee, linesmen, pretty usual. I know in the Minnesota tournament, they had referees provided, which I think was actually a good uh, idea, but unfortunately it wasn't working out for us. So all teams will have to referee. Everything else is pretty standard. Um, I talked about the five foot line. Again, at this point in the game, that's pretty standard, right? So you cannot jump. You can land inside the five foot line, but you cannot jump from within it. Um, and then that's really the main thing under one minute, the game stops, right? The clock stops. Uh, so ensuring that, you know, that last minute ball goes out of play, referee is supposed to stop the clock and the game goes on. There is, I guess the next three things that I'm going to discuss is probably worth spending a little bit more time. First one is the overtime rule. We actually introduced this in 2018 uh, when we first uh, had this tournament six years ago. It's evolved a little bit, but we're back to the roots now. So overtime rule is pretty simple. Um, it basically means there is one extra point that needs to be played. So simple example is New York is playing um, Stanmore, right? New York is down 6-7, 30 seconds to go. New York has the serve. We serve, we play, play, rallies, keep, keeps going, 30 seconds are up, time is over. We keep playing, we keep playing. New York gets the point, seven all. Usually we win because we have serve. In this case, the overtime rule kicks in. And the overtime rule is one more rally, that's it. So we have the serve, we serve, you get a service point, that's it, game over. If I'm hitting the serve in the net, game over. It goes over, rally continues. It's one golden point, basically. So pretty straightforward. Uh, I think it makes it interesting. There's a little bit of a strategy involved. The team that might be up, in this case, what I was describing, Stanmore might try to get a little bit more aggressive, right? So it adds a little element to the game. The other um, rule is around the active inactive player. So I think this has been pretty clear to everybody as well, but just quickly to reiterate, um, basically it's 10 players active at all times. I know some teams have registered more than 10. Uh, some people have 10, uh, 11, some teams have 14. So just make sure that you have 10 active players on the court, let the referee know, let the other captain know. Um, and the guys who are not in that 10 are basically deemed inactive. They cannot participate, they cannot be at stand by the third line. They're basically not part of that game um, going on. In the, <clears throat> in the playoffs, which is best of three, um, there's one substitution that you're allowed at the end of the game. So say I'm a team that has 13 players registered. I pick my top, you know, not top 10, my, my 10 active, three are inactive. Play game one. At the end of game one, I, I, I'm like, look, I need to make a change. You're only allowed one substitution for the entire series. One player goes out, another one comes in. And game two onwards, you have to finish with the new... 10 active players. So in that specific scenario, two players are inactive for the entire series. Okay, so one substitution is allowed for a playoff series. In the, in the regular round robin, it's, it's one, we'll go over the format, it's one game, so it doesn't matter, 10 active for the game. Next game, you can have a different 10. A uh, question, Bode, just because I feel like maybe the people will ask this. Um, when a player is uh, in, inactive, and they wanted to come that same player that's that was deemed inactive at the at the second game, for example, they can never come back in at any point until and if you make the semis. 
correct so the next that's one. a great point yes uh so the last line here so substitutions are, are one way meaning a player when he becomes active or goes from active to inactive they cannot be subbed back in that's the one substitution it's one way and once they uh, become inactive they're inactive for the rest of that playoff series and and that can that player still stand behind or would they still they would have to also go to the sideline right. they are at that point deemed inactive so correct so any if an active player sideline only not behind in the third line correct because okay. the behind the behind the third line is you know the ball hits you it's it part, gets you very know, it's, yeah and then yeah, confusion so, starts right yeah, yeah. correct correct so um sorry bodhi i have one question here too by the way assalamu alaikum all the viewers um in in the round robin if somebody gets injured there's still no substitution correct and again remember because you have 10 active right so typically you have two nets six out so that's eight and usually if you have 10 you usually will have two more guys in the third line right so um you know we we deem it sufficient so yes even if you have an injury it is not a reason to do a substitution so in the round robin you pick your 10 and that's it under no circumstance can somebody who's inactive come in in the playoff series because it's a best of 3 there's again a little bit of strategy involved who do i bring in who do i not bring in um that's when you're allowed one substitution so you still have typically again most teams are registered with 10 which is kind of standard so you have two other guys so if one guy goes hurt goes out is hurt you can bring somebody else in that's already standing third line okay and the last thing honestly before we jump into the the meat of this is is really around some discipline rules and and uh you know this is look this is really just to ensure and, and put some again some guidelines around ensuring we're all you know we're, we're all in this to to promote each other right community spirit brotherhood um but look if you at the end of the day it does things do get heated we're all competitive we step on the court we want to win right we're brothers off the court we're brothers on the court but we want to win and if you look at any competitive sport out there basketball um soccer anything there are governing principles around discipline And so that's really what this is there for this is not a this is not meant in any shape or form to be to be like a police it's really just some guidelines and so what we've introduced is an idea of a technical foul um and a double technical foul so a technical foul means you lose a point so if you had the serve serve goes to the other team if the other team had the serve the other team gets a point just like you lost a rally essentially uh now look who's going to be giving these technical fouls it is the referee uh, but uh, us as the organizing committee we've put together a a group uh, a group of people that are part of our disciplinary committee and ultimately we will have the ability to override any decision the referee has made um i know look so i know i got feedback from some people this is too much power in the hands of the referee to try it I mean ultimately you look at any sport the referee the umpire they are the decision makers um and so i guess our ask is whoever is refereeing be smart um a warning has to be issued you cannot a referee cannot just give a technical foul right away they have to issue a warning if they see that okay things are starting to get out of hand there's excessive taunting going on you have to give a warning The only time a referee can give a technical foul directly is under two circumstances. One, when there is swearing directly at an op opponent or the referee. So, you walk up to the referee, you drop the F bomb on the referee directly, that's a technical foul, no questions asked. If you go across the net and punch or push your opponent, again, those are things that there is just no place for that in our game. Everything else is fun and you know you want to get into your opponent's minds and all that's all fun but those two things are has no place um in our mind so those those are the only two reasons you can go directly to a technical foul okay so there's some a little bit more detail here but i think that covers the gist of it we've sent this around to all the captains so please digest take a look read through it and then if there's any clarifications we can go through that um yeah i i got one question uh and i think it's point number 1 2 3 4 5 6 if a double technical foul 
is issued during a playoff series, which is a best of three, the player is ejected for that set. All right. Sets yeah. that means game or entire series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess I, I probably uh, it's worth clarifying. So I said a technical foul is a loss of a point. A double technical foul is a loss of a point plus the player is out for that game. So okay. if it's round robin, you're out for that game. The game's finished. Next game, you can come back in. Mm -hmm. If it's a playoff and you get a double technical foul on game one, you're out for game one. You can definitely come back in for game two. Okay. okay. So you're out only for that one game. And again, back to the, in, in, if somebody gets technic, double tech and is out, you basically have to finish with nine players. You can fill his spot. If you're your front center, put somebody else in there. It's just that player cannot play in just that game. Game one. Game two, you're back in um, and so on and so forth. Again, so it's real. This is really just an attempt to try to um, ensure that things are moving along smoothly. Um, and, and again, may the best team win, but but at the end of the day, we're all brothers. So that's that's the point of this. Okay, good. So I think that covers some of the, the housekeeping items. Uh, I guess we're ready to jump into the format, much awaited format. So let's get into it. Starting off, we have 30 teams. This is probably the worst kept secret um, that we have today, but it is official that basically the round one will be five pools, six teams in each pool, 15 minute games. Um, and remember, we have five sports at sports time. So this actually kind of aligns pretty well. Each team, each pool will essentially be associated with the court. So everyone in pool one, all your games are going to be in court one, pool two, court two, and so on and so forth. So six in each pool, and there's going to be a round robin within your pool. So each team round one plays five games. What happens next is we split into cup and plate. And so after the games are played, the top three from each pool go to cup and the bottom three in each pool go to plate. So what that means is we have 15 teams that go to cup, 15 teams that go to plate. Um, in terms of scheduling, this is obviously going to be Friday. We started 2.30 um, onwards. This should complete by around, probably right around dinner time, around 8 o'clock. Um, and so what that means is the cup and the plate will start Friday night. We have the ground till 11 o'clock, so we'll try to get as many games in as possible. So for those of you listening, Friday, uh, the cup and the plate will start for sure because we, we plan to be done by around 8 o'clock with the round one. Once we're in cup, um, so let's start with the cup, which is the top kind of bracket there. So like I said, 15 teams, it's going to be a full round robin, best of one, 15 minute games. So each team is going to play 14 games and arguably these are the top 14 teams that will make it in. And uh, there's going to be some crazy, crazy, crazy games in there, uh, but it really ensures that all the top teams really play each other at least one time. But sometimes, look, we go to a tournament and you're like, man, I wish I played, you know, Orlando. I, I didn't get a taste of that team or this team. Well, this ensures at least for the top 15 teams that happens in the plate event. And so uh, three courts out of the five will be fully dedicated to the cup uh, tournament. The plate, which will probably also be very, very competitive, will be 15 teams, two pools, one pool of seven. One pool of eight, round robin within the pools. It's actually best of two 12-minute games just to ensure that they also get um, enough games. And that's basically the pl plate format. So two, two courts for plate, two pools. Again, one dedicated court for each. Um, and then cup will be full round robin of 15 teams. Then we move into the, uh, the uh, interesting part of the tournament. The top six in the cup are automatically through to quarters. Seven to 10 will play for a play-in. So seven plays 10, eight plays nine. It's not NBA style playing. It's just a one, seven plays 10. If your 10th beats the seventh, you are automatically the seventh seed. 
eight plays nine for the eight seed spot. And that basically is your quarterfinal layout. So essentially one to 10 have a chance to proceed, 11 to 15, the tournament ends for them there in the cup. In the plate, it's, it's really just a full round robin and then they're straight into quarters. So four from each pool, pretty standard crisscross into playoffs and quarters. And that's for all the marbles, playoffs, quarters, semis, finals, best of three. Is it 15 minute games? Is it 20 minute games? Is it 25 minute games? To be honest, we don't know. Um, it's up to, actually, this is my plea. Make sure guys, if, if you're listening, follow the schedule. The more aligned we are, if we're looking for you to get you on the court, that's going to limit how much time we have to play games. Ideally, they're all 20 minutes in the quarter semis, finals, um, but that's uh, something will will be game time decision purely based on time. So that's the format. And obviously, all the playoff games for Cup will be Sunday. Quarters, semis, final, and the trophy is yours. Sunday afternoon. Nice. I like it. That that play in that seven, ten, eight, nine, that's that's nice. That's tricky. That's like that and that is a best of one, you said? That is a best of one 20 minute game, correct. 20 minute uh, game. So anything wow. can happen. So seriously. 10 beats a seven takes their spot. Wow. That's that's yeah. nuts. I like that. And look, I mean, the Salman, you did a podcast where you went, you went through the teams. I mean, look, it is, it it's is, so uh, crazy, yeah. the the competition level is absolutely insane. Like you look left, right, any which way you go, there is a team waiting for you there. So, yeah. I think I think the margin between each team is going to be so little. Question, uh, he, like, what's the 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 tiebreaker? Is it head to head? Oh, that's a great point. Yes, it's all head to head in every. In every uh, scenario, it's always head to head. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Head, you know, just because sometimes if somebody gives a walkover and stuff, there's a lot mm -hmm. at stake. You don't want to give somebody a 15 point differential, right? Like it's yeah. head to head. Um, if there's two teams are tied, it's head to head. If it's three teams are tied, it's still head to head. If there's one of those teams that beat both of them, they're automatically the higher seed. But if it's kind of a you know, musical time. chairs, as we call it, right? One beat the other, the other beat the like kind of a round. Yeah. Then, of course, it's point differential across the board. That's that's so that just makes round robin that much more important, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, it's all head to head. Well, actually, same thing for the first round. You know, for the first round, there's going to be some interesting games to make it into cup or plate, and and that's also uh, could come yeah. down to the head to head. Yeah, true. Okay, so that's it. And we're, I guess, uh, ready to move on to the pools then, right? Let's do it. What everybody has been waiting for, right? <laughs> All right, let's do it. So remember, we got five pools, six teams each. Here we go. Round one, pool one. We got Allentown Challenges Green, which is their C team. We got New York Union Islanders Red, which is actually our C team. Look out for those, those kids, they're great. Orlando Union B. Stanmore Jaffrey's A. Toronto Jaffrey's 4.0 and Toronto Warriors. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. pool one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good pool. Yep. Pool two, Allentown Challengers White, which is their B team. Minnesota A, New York Islanders Youth. This is actually our youth team. Uh, believe it or not, they, these guys started playing a few uh, months ago. They're 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 good experience for them. Orlando A. RKs Edmonton. It's kind of the joint team between RKs and Edmonton, and United Stars A. So wow. in this pool, you got you know some of the some of the heavy hitters are all together in one pool. Oh, wow! Yeah, that's a good pool too, man. Yeah, that's a lot of good matchups there. Yeah. All right, pool three, New York Union Islanders Black, which is one of our B teams, Orlando Union C, Ottawa, Strikers, Toronto Jaffries 
and United Stars B. Wow. Okay. Mm. There's going to be some interesting matchups here. Um, you know, Orlando C against New York B, I can see it be interesting. Um, United Stars B is obviously always in the mix. They got a great squad there. So there should be some really interesting matchups here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, pool four, London Lions. Uh, this is our, our, our friends from, uh, from across the ocean. This is uh, Bilal's team, team, right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. The London Lions, New York A, Orlando Union D, Toronto Jaffrey's OG, United Stars Youth, and Van City B. So Husney, take it easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's that, that's a heavy pool, bro. That is, that is the, the London yeah, Lions, New York Union, Islanders, and Toronto Jaffrey. That, those are gonna be some good games. That's going to be Bob. Last but not least, Pool 5, Allentown Challengers Black, which is the A team. New York Islanders Blue, which is our other B team. Orlando Union Known. Jaffrey's 3.0. Van City A. And Toronto North with their new rebranded logo. So those are the pools. Mm. Wow. Okay. Interesting, huh? So realistically, Bode, you have to win three games to pretty much qualify for the next round. And when you do that, it, there, there's no seeding. You're just going back into a That's brand right. new pool. That's right. So the goal is win three games and you're basically guaranteed a spot in cup. That's pretty much how it's going to work. And then, uh, yeah, so that, that's all you got to really do. So one, actually, business. one other thing real quick. Um, we are working on an app. Uh, we're going to have the schedules out on Wednesday. Uh, so today is Sunday. Uh, Wednesday, the schedule for the first round will be out. Everyone will know who's playing who when. Um, and it's all going to be, um, you know, on an app. And there's a website that we'll share as we get closer. But, um, you know, that, that, is, that will that, that will that show like live standings too if you want to go show check live standings oh, everything awesome. it's actually the tourney five uh, some of us were following the unity games in dubai uh that's what they were using i think it worked pretty well actually for a user as well as a player right <clears throat> so uh we're, we're actually using the same software that's awesome um okay i thank you Bode. i appreciate that uh hang around a little bit because i want to i want to introduce uh Hussein Gigi I know he, he didn't get a get a chance to speak yet but Hussein thank you so much for being here I um what do you think about the pool what do you think about the format what do you think about the look any any comments any takes yeah I mean you know I mean I think the pools look really serious there I mean there's some really heavy duty teams that um are gonna come and start pounding from day one um as for the uh format I think that was pretty clear cut um, I like the new rule that they brought in, some of the new rules of, um, you know, of the technical foul kind of keeps in check everybody that, you know, what we're all brothers at the end of the day, exactly, yeah. we're all fighting for brotherhood and uh, not the trophy, you know, trophy is just there, you know, it's just a ring or whatever it is, but at the end of the day, it's all unity. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the format is great, Bodhi. I think you guys done a wonderful job. I like the fact that it's kind of gone back to the old school overtime rule where it's just one rally, man. It just makes it that much more exciting, right? Like everyone tunes into that one rally in the minute. And I, I love the Orlando union, Minnesota, you know, they did the minute one. It's cool too, but it's also like, you can lose serve, gain serve, lose serve, gain serve. You know, it's just like, it's too much plot twist in a minute. This is just, yep. you want instant uh, gratification. There you go. You want instant satis satisfaction. There you go. Get, You're going to get, get a guarantee. Yours. Yeah. Um, I also love the pools. I think the pools are, look, at the end of the day, it doesn't really mean much as long as you can beat the teams you're supposed to. And then you're in. And then once you're in, you start all over again. So it doesn't matter. Um, for me, you know, I think it, it's, a, it's a matter of, you know, uh, you want to win the games quickly as possible in the first round so that you're, you're fresh, right? You don't want to be, you know, sleeping on anybody and, you, you know, get your foot off the gas a little bit. And for teams that are older, like Jaffrey's OG, you know, they need those extra games 
to kind of keep them fresh because <laughs> you just don't know, you know, the, the, their average age is like, I, I, I last I heard was like 59. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're at, <laughs> you're at peak, you know? Um, but no, I think it's, I think it's awesome, man. It's great stuff. And of course you do a wonderful job just putting everything together. You always do a great presentation about it. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, and as Nain uh, mentioned, the rings, the rings are back. So, uh, you know, you, you, uh, we're all playing for a wow. trophy and the rings are here too. So that's right. awesome. There's that's a lot awesome. at stake. There's a lot at stake. Okay, so let's let's discuss some things. I'm going to start with you, Bode, because since you're the chairman, you're the guy who's running this, you've seen all the pools, the rosters, you know what's going on. Give me your top four. Like, what is your top four if you were to you know, think of some, you don't have to give me any matchups, but just who, who do you think is making it into the semis? And I mean, look, yeah, it is, like I said before, it is, you're picking hairs, you're picking hairs. You know, what I do, while it's very tempting to, um, to list all the teams that we know kind of, I do think there's an upset somewhere along the way, you know? Wow. Am I going to stick my neck out and say who it is? Maybe <laughs> not uh, in this forum, but I do, I do in my heart know that there is an upset. And look, there usually is an upset in New York. We've seen it, right? 2018, Jaffries was out in the quarters. I believe the year before that, United Stars was lost in the quarters against uh, Allentown, right. right? So there is history of upsets. Uh, top four. So again, I'm not gonna stick my neck out, but I I, I believe there is an upset in the making. Uh, so I'll go with the um, with the more popular, Orlando A, United Stars A. New York makes it in home court. I think makes a big difference for us, and I'm gonna go with uh, Jaffrey's 2.0. Those are my four. I like that. I like that. Wow. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give it to you, Husni. It's all the floor is all yours. You got to give me your top four. I, I'm a, I'm hoping it's a little different so that you know we can have something to talk about. But what are you thinking? I'm thinking the lines of Orlando A, mm -hmm. Stars A, uh, New York. Now that fourth place, I'm taking Jeffries out of the equation because it's going to be biased, right? So I'm going to say, yeah, Jaffrey's is going to be there. But um, I'm going to take that out of the equation to make it a little spicy. And that fourth place is what's what, what's giving me uh, frenzies right now. It's like, who can that fourth place team be? Would it, could it be a Minnesota? Could it be a, yeah. um, a North? Yes. Could it be a Warriors? Could it be a Lions? Could it be, you know, there's many teams that are coming that are just stacked. So um, that fourth place I team, I don't know. I'm going to leave it at that. I, I really don't know. I don't know. It's that, not good but enough, if I had man. to pick. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I knew you were going to say that. Buddy. I knew you were going to say that. So I'm going to go with um, Warriors. That's yeah. my Cinderella team this time. Wow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> wow. Okay. I like that. I like that take. That's a cool take. Um, I'm, I'm going to go, yes, yeah, stars defending champs, right. From the last tournament, going to give them that, uh, Orlando a, I think we make it, um, Jaffrey's 2.0. I think they're in, uh, I think, you know, Kizer, Nick, that's a, that's a lot to, to handle. Uh, you know, we tasted that body in Stanmore. Nick was by himself a lot to handle. Um, and I think the last spot, similar to what you guys were all saying, you know, it could be an upset. It could not be, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm going to save my New York guys. And for me, it was a toss up between New York and Minnesota, because I feel like they're very similar in many ways. Right. They're rebuilding teams. But like, you know, Minnesota's had very much, you know, a successful run the last few tournaments, a good semifinal showing last time, a finals in Orlando and New York has been up and coming. They had a good semifinal showing last tournament. But for me, it's it's the home edge. Right. I think New York at home in that court, it's just tough to beat, man. So for me, I'm going to say New York makes it in the top four. So I know it's it's very much similar to Bode's. It's exactly the same, I think. But um, it's not to say that Minnesota can't make it. It's not to say a oh, team like the Warrior, Warriors can't make it. And for me, you know, to be honest, I don't know. You know, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this, and I'm gonna ask you guys the same. I know that Husni already said that. You know, the Warriors he feels like is 
his Cinderella team or making me a, a team that can make a dark horse type run. For me, the dark horse, I think this tournament is, is London Lions. And I think that London Lions, I think, you know, I, I know I talk about Bilal Kaba a lot, but I think their team, from what I'm hearing as a whole, has a lot of guys from Dynamos. And I think they can, if they mesh and if they can, they, they've been practicing a lot from what I heard. If they can make a little bit of noise, you get into a quarterfinal matchup that's like, you know, one of those four, five, three, six type matchups. You know, no one's really got the edge. And then all of a sudden, you know, they pull a game and now they're in game three. Something happens. You know, they make it into a semi. I mean, I could see it. You know, some teams, you know, they, they, they win that game one and it catches you by surprise sometimes if they're a lower seed and you're scrambling to win two straight and you just can't find you're in quicksand. Right. You're like this team just caught you off guard. They hit you with a right hook right on round one. And you're like, wait a second. So I think London Lions could make, could make a weird, crazy Cinderella type run. Um, what do what do you think? Yeah, I agree. And look, we we have not mentioned Stanmore, mm -hmm. which is crazy, right? Because that is a team that is also coming locked and loaded. So yeah, I mean, it is it is gonna be it, it, there is this is a battle. It's a battle, and I think honestly, I think what's gonna differentiate it is uh, we talked about is Sunday. Who's rested? Because it's a long, long path. So yeah. that round robin cup is going to be critical. You get a, and there's no easy games to just kind of coast through that. So yeah. I think endurance, depth, right? How quickly you can adjust. Those are like the little details that could really, really make a difference, in my opinion. Do Do you have a dark horse team, buddy? That you think? Uh, my dark horse team is. Uh, I'm actually going to go with uh North. Uh, because Ooh. North, look, nice. gotta give it to they are date Friday. Who's walking in as defending champs in New York? It's That's North. It's, yes, true. it's not maybe exactly the same North team, but there are pieces there who have won in New York. Um, that's a good point. So that that's my team. I know they're they're rebuilding a little bit. They got some pieces, but look out for them. <clears throat> I like that. I like that a lot. Um. I won't go into our finals prediction just yet. I think we're, we're going to run through some of the awards that are here and, and we'll start off. Hasni, if you don't mind me, I'm going to ask you first. If you were to give, you know, there's a best serviceman award. Who's your take for the best serviceman you think this tournament? Oh, <laughs> there's no doubt. In here. All right. Service, my Emirates, I'm going. I said, I'm taking that baby. I'm taking that one. I like but that. um, but besides that, then you know, I mean, there's all great servicemen out of Mustafa uh, Shivji. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the time, right? Any day, you know, he's he's there. He'll get you those three, four points. Yeah. So, I I, I think it's either a toss up for between me and him. I like that. On that one, I'm like that. One. that. I like that. Bodhi, what, what is your take on, on best service? Uh, look, there's a lot of servicemen, uh, like Hasni mentioned, right? Busti Arifili Combo is killer. Mm -hmm. uh, Imran Morji can serve really yes. well. Yes. Uh, but I am going to go with Riaz Chapsi. Oh, United Ooh. Stars. Yeah. Like that. That's a good one. That's a good one, man. That's a and you, Sal? Um, I'm, going with, I'm going with Mustafa Shuji. I think Musti. Yeah. Coming home, you know, getting a chance to, you know, play on the A team again. But, you know, he's never really played as a guest in New York on an A team, a team that has championship aspirations. So I'm going to go with Musti, man. I think Musti, you know, uh, I think he, he brings out all the stops this time and, and has his best service uh, performance. Uh, that's just my take. Um, uh, I'll go with best upcoming and I'll, I'll leave it to you, Bode, first. Uh, who do you think? I mean, there's a lot of players that are coming up. There's a lot of players that have already won this award. But if you were to give it to one kid that you think is going to be that guy, um, who do you think that is? Uh, upcoming. That's a good one. Uh, I have two names. Again, I'm not going to name. There's a lot of really great players. So if we don't name anybody here, it doesn't mean we're not thinking about you. Two names come to mind. Uh, one is uh, Kazim Virani from Stanmore. Uh, you know, we saw him in, in Dubai. He, he really held his own. And the other one is uh, Zidane from Allentown Challengers. Right. Um, I'm going to go with, with Kazim from Stanmore. 
um, because I think he's going to be a, their new piece that will reju- you know, push that team to the next level. Yeah, I like that take. Uh, Hasni, what's what's your take on upcoming players? Uh, a lot of youth now influxed into this game, you know? A lot of them. A lot of them. Um, I'm probably going to go with um, the Minnesota kid. Um, but Batush? Batush, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I mean, I think he's playing really well. So I think um, wow. if I had it, he would be on my list. I like that, man. I think that he's going to love hearing that because he's working really hard. <laughs> He's worked hard, man. He's worked hard. He's uh, all over the place. And, you know, he's, he's the engine for that team. So I think he'll really appreciate hearing that. Um, for and me, you I, 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 yeah. I got, uh, I got Zidi. I got Zidi Hasnali. I think, I think he's just, he's his, he's a kisser light right now. You know, he's a prototype is that way. You know, he just, he fits the mold athletic, um, you know, can jump out the gym plays in the front line, gets lifted the ball to, you know, he is young. I believe he's like 15 or 16. So, I mean, you know, getting that exposure that early, kind of like Kizer did, right? Super young age. He talked about it in his interview, right? Where he, Husney, you would lift him the ball, like you would throw him the ball in the air and tell him hit, hit, hit at 15. That was the only way he was able to kind of gauge that timing and understand, you know, gain some hops. And um, I, I think Zidi's got that, you know, it's just a matter of it's going to be a learning curve for him. And until he brings his team to a championship caliber team, but I think Zidi's gonna some gonna some brighten some eyes this tournament for sure. But that's I know Bodhi, I kind of took that from you, but I think that no, 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 it's good. We we played them recently. Yeah, we talk about a Cinderella team, right? I mean, hey, that's yeah, another never, one right there. Good, uh, Zidi gets hot. They got some youth, and uh, they could make the run too. Uh, I'm gonna start. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Hasni. You want to say something? Yeah, no. I was gonna say that there's also another kid that I saw playing that's really good. Um, Sumar son. What is there Sumar? Yes, yes, very. So good. He, he's really good, also. So I mean, there's so much talent out there nowadays. But I mean, these are just a few that come to mind right now. No, that's a good point. Um, I'm gonna start with my best, Neddy, uh, and then and then Hasni, I'll go to you. Then I'll go to Bode. My best Nettie, I think, this time, and I think it's he's going to get it, it, it's Sakib. I think he's just phenomenal. He's very much like Hassan Manekia. He's very much like, you know, he's just got that look, that feel. Uh, he's got the same heart as his father in terms of just resilient. It doesn't get tired. I mean, the kid's got a boatload of energy. And uh, very cool, calm, collected, you know, having a good time, chilling. You know, you sometimes you'll watch them and they're joking around, they're laughing. Um, and you, if anybody watched that quarterfinal they had against uh, when he was playing front center for Hatheries, actually, uh, a Toronto Hatheries against uh, Stars in the last tournament, he spikes a ball at nine all, okay, or something like that. He messes it up and it pretty much costs him the game. But man, they're laughing, they're smiling. They're not disrespecting the game, but they're more so enjoying the moment. Like, it's okay. Like, you tried, you went for it, you know, and they all supported him in that. And I think he gets that same vibe with Kizer and Nick and these guys. I think they just kind of let him do him, you know? So I think Sakib, Sakib wins that award. Um, but Hasni, uh, to you, best Netty. Yeah, I also think that Sakib is going to win that award. I mean, hands down. I mean, I've seen this kid play in practices. I played with him in tournaments. Um, I see what he comes with, what energy he comes with. I think, you know what? I mean, he's like, I don't know. I mean, you're right. I, w- I would describe him to Hassan Manekia, right? right? That right. same style of, you know, getting those putty balls and, you know, diving and, you know. So I do, my vote goes for Sakib on that one also. Bode, what about you? I'm going to take a leaf of uh, Hassan's book here. I'm going to take New York. Uh, I think Habib and Mosin, but I'm probably going to come across bias. So let's leave them out for now. Fair. I, was, Fair. I was trying to actually remember... Um, we, we, we did those five-star ratings. I'm sure everybody has seen those for all the 31 and now 30 teams. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember who we had up there. But uh, my best netty is going is uh, Safe Kamal. Safe is another one. You know, we don't talk wow. about him enough. He's coming back to New York like you, Saman. He's familiar with sports time. And he probably has a lot to prove too, right? So uh, I think this is Safe's here. Wow. Yeah, it's a great take. I think, yeah, you're right. He's, he's 
kind of towards the tailor end of his career. Uh, so you're right. He's, he's at the tailor end. I don't know. He's where. 30. So Nettie's, Nettie's, Nettie's are done pretty early, man. So he's, he's almost 30 now, but he's, he knows like, this is it for him. Like he has to showcase that, that little bit left in the tank, you know, he's got to showcase that. So I, li I like that take, man. I think he's going to, he's going to love hearing that. Um, <clears throat> I am going to go to uh, a plate MVP first, uh, before we get into anything else. If you were to choose a plate MVP right now, Bode, who do you think is the plate MVP? Who do you think wins the plate cup? I mean, sorry, the plate uh, trophy. Man, this plate event is is going to be uh, extremely, extremely interesting. Uh, I am going to go with New York, Steve. Our C team's coming in real, real strong. Yeah. And it is uh, and my MVP, I know we talked about Azar Sumar. Um, you know, he's contender for upcoming, but I'm gonna go with Irfan Karmali. Okay. Not, not the United Stars, Irfan Karmali, but Irfan Karmali, um, who you know, who's playing for New York, the living Noah Jersey. Karmali's son. Noah Karmali's son. He's a he's a great soccer player, he's athletic. We'll see him on the court. He can jump and hit. So we'll like that. that's, a, that's a cool take. Hasni, what about you? Give me give me a runner uh uh sorry, a plate uh, winner and an M an MVP for them. Um I'm probably going with also uh New York C on that one. And um, like the way I said, I think that kid is amazing, Azur Sumar. Yeah. So my vote is with him on that one. Yeah, I like that. Um Azur's a Azur's an amazing player, man. He yeah, can, he's really good. Lights out. I would uh for me it's it's Van City B. I think they win it. Um, for me, it's a lot of like teams that stick together, kind of figure it out eventually. I think they've been together for like four, four tournaments straight. So I think they're going to figure it out. Um, they kind of still have the core pieces and, uh, my, my MVP would be Ali Hirji. Uh, Ali Hirji actually recently came to Orlando and played and he's, he's an old school guy, guy. Like he's not like young kid. I mean, he's almost like what, 30 maybe, but he's played with stars. I think he won a trophy with stars once as a netty. I mean, he's a Toronto guy. But he's gone there and started to play out, came to our practice here in Orlando, played very well. I think that he has a chance of, of winning the MVP, and I think he can lead Van City to, I think he's their captain too, so I think he can lead them to a plate a plate trophy for sure. Um, One name that comes to mind, Salman, is also Ali Kamalia from uh, United Stars. Yes. Uh, he, I actually remember 2018, they, they, I believe, won it, and then I think they gave up the finals to uh, the kids or something like that, but he was yeah. there. He yeah. was there. He, so he's another contender for a plate sure. uh, MVP. Sure. Benny, Benny is such a nice, Benny. nice dude, man. Yeah, he always, I, I love when he just gets his, gets his shine. You know, he's a good, good guy, but loves the game. His father, uh, yes. I, I believe, served for Jaffrey's. For so his dad, Marhum Zamin Kamalia, yes. His dad did serve for, you know, what, I mean, what, what, what can you say about Benny, right? Like, seriously. Yeah. Like, sure. I mean, the guy is like, He's too cool. Like, I mean, he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but I mean, what a player. I mean, loves the game, passion for the game, same as his dad. Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I'm going to go with a, a winner. I mean, we cannot, we're not doing winner, but uh, sorry, MVP winner for the, um, for the, for the cup. Uh, I, I, I'm going to start and then Husni, I'll go to you. Then Bodhi, you can have the last call here. But I think for me, the MVP this time, and to be honest, it's funny because I don't think he's won MVP since the first championship he's won. I'm going to go with Imran Jiraj. I think Imran Jiraj is after the last tournament. Um, he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. He went to Dubai, unfortunately got injured um, and couldn't really play. But when he was not, not injured the first two days, I mean, he was playing lights out. So I really think Imran Jiraj turns a corner here. I think he does really well. And I think he he wins the MVP. And I think for him, it's like almost like he's got kind of like, a you know, something to prove, you know, a lot of, you know, Kizzer talk, a lot of, you know, KJ talk, you know. So he's kind of like, hey, man, <laughs> I'm still around, brother. So I think he comes out guns hard. And I think I think he wins the MVP. Hussain, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Imran is one of the faces of volleyball, right? I mean, he's really good. I mean, what can you say about him? Um but um, me, I would personally go with Kizza. I mean, always a safe bet for an MVP. I think he's won like 50 already, but who's counting? <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, that kid is just a beast. I mean, so my, I'll go with Kizza on that one. 
I like that. What, what about you? Oh, wow. Uh, this is crazy. Uh, I'm going to go <laughs> with uh, Usman Limbada. Ooh. Tried and trusted. Ooh. Again, I keep going back to uh, my history lesson here. But again, he, he was the guy. He's probably only got better since he last won in New York. Um, and he has a better, arguably a better team around him, and they won last. So to me, it's uh, the Turab Limbada combo, but I'm going with uh, Limbada as my MVP. I like that take. I think if there's anybody who who last showcase is not is unstoppable in sport time, it's Usman Limbada. So I think he kind of knows that court by heart, right? Um, Mori, I'm going to start with you. Give me your your finals prediction. The two teams. I don't want to know the winner. You know, that's a, that's a tough call always. But give me two teams you think that are going to be in the finals. We said we're not doing that, right? Uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, man. That, that is. Uh, Bodhi, you got to give an answer. Bodhi, you got to give an yeah, answer. I know, I know. Karma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am going to go. I think Orlando is in. And it's really t- tempting to say United Stars. That's probably a matchup that everybody wants to see. I'm taking the easy answer, to be honest. But I'll go Orlando Stars. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, Hasni, well, I'm assuming you're going to say something different, right? So just... I'm going to say something way different. Yeah, because I want to see something different. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, I'm going. I want to. I want to say. Um, Orlando is going to meet probably stars in the semis. Okay, okay because there's probably, might be a slip up somewhere because there's too many stack teams. Somebody's yeah, going to so. lose somewhere down the line. So I'm just trying to be conservative and say that you know what, stars is going to be playing Orlando in the semis this time. Um, can Orlando beat Stars? That's another thing because apparently Stars has this kryptonite, which is called Lombarda, <laughs> right? And I mean, Lombarda, I think, has played for three different teams and beaten Orlando for three different teams, right? That's so actually, I, I think about that. I never thought yeah. about that. That's a pretty good stat there. Yeah. Right. So if they can overcome the uh, the kryptonite, um, I do think Orlando will win and go to the finals. I mean, I think now, I think you guys have lost three times to Lombarda. So I'm assuming that now you're going to know what to do and what not to do. So that's a safe bet uh, to go with. And um, I'm probably going to go with, uh, you know, uh, 2.0. Um, you know, with Nick and Kizer, I mean, I don't think, you know, I think if that combo clicks, I think, you know what, they're unstoppable from day one. I think 2.0 over stars would be a phenomenal final. Like, that would yeah, be so much Is fun. that a final or a semifinal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, any which way. Like, look at the Maybe semis, man, right? Like, it's going to be amazing to watch. Um, yeah, for me, I'm going to, I'm going to cop out. I'm going to, I'm going to go Orlando stars. Um, I just think that, you know, it's, 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 for me, it's like the two most complete teams, I think, are them. And so it's just easier to go that way. I'm not saying there won't be an upset. I'm not saying, you know, 2.0 or New York, obviously, or Minnesota or any of these OGs can come in and do something. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you're going to go with what's uh, consistent, what's uh, complete, you're going to say those two teams are probably the most complete right now. And because you don't, you haven't seen 2.0 in a while, you haven't seen some of the other teams in a while, you're going to, you know, you're not, you're not going to know really until the day of. So we're all kind of shooting, you know, darts in a dark room. But, uh, but I think that that's uh, what I'm to Husni's point. So I guess this is where that standings becomes important because you slip up one little bit and you're, you're, you're facing each other in the semis. I mean, it's the, the, the difference is, extremely the margin for error is extremely extremely low very low. and remember Bode, remember that it's also a three-day tournament right right i mean to play consistent for three days it's a tough it's really really tough so yeah do i assume that you know some teams are going to lose along the way for sure and i think that's the difference right if you look at it across the board for this tournament to probably any others that we have played recently that's the difference in the other ones you can kind of coast through day one, kind of coast through day two, 
okay, day three is when I'm bringing my game. Here, it's actually slightly because you cannot do that. You, if you do, you cannot just coast because if you do that, you're setting yourself up. And yes, obviously, you got to beat everybody to win the whole thing. It makes perfect sense. But it also makes sense to try to get the best matchup possible. So yeah. you can't just coast through. They start Friday night. You That's the thing. You, you can't even wait till day two. You, day one, brother, Friday night, you're going to get tested. And the funny thing is, usually Friday is known to be notoriously a, a day of, you know, three games. You're taking a rest. You just kind of come see everybody, see the court, feel it out. Brother, there's no feeling out. You guys, Friday night, you are not 100 or not ready to play like every other Friday. Um, you know, in previous tournaments, if you, you think it's going to be that, you might slip up a game on a Friday and night. That and then, game's going to cost you and you'll see it on Sunday. Exactly. And then Saturday, you're sitting there like, wait a second, we lost to... London Lions last night because we weren't ready. They were ready. And now you're, you're catching up. You're playing catch up. And the moment you play catch up, you start losing games. And then on top of that, styles make fights. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't mind being a second seed, a third seed, a fourth seed. I don't think anybody really cares. You only care about who you're playing. So if it's four or five and your fifth is a team that you're notoriously known to, to lose against, you're not going to want that matchup at all. So it's um, you're right. Anything can happen. Team big time teams, top teams can lose in the quarterfinals. It's very possible. Um, it would I think for me, if you really look at the crux of it, four or five is going to be like a semifinal matchup in any other tournament. Even three six, I think is good. Even three six. Like, uh... Yeah, it, it it could be a quarterfinal match, a semifinal matchup in any other tournament will be the quarterfinal matchup here. So you're not. It's not like you're waking up at nine in, on Sunday or eight on Sunday thinking, oh, yeah, easy quarters. We're playing a B team, <laughs> bro. <laughs> you're playing an A team and you're probably playing a championship caliber team. So scary, scary to think that you wake up and you could be the first seed, but you're playing Husnain Gigi the next morning. <laughs> like you can't sleep at night. Like, you, you know, like I remember like that gives me nightmares. Finding out we're playing Jaffrey's the next morning, like damn, bro. Like so that that's 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 the fun of it, man. That's the fun of it. Um, but yeah, man, I think don't that's... slip up, sir. Don't slip up uh, <laughs> yeah. on that Friday <laughs> night, you know, <laughs> because slip. you can't slip up because you don't know who you're gonna face. Um, on that Friday, that first match could be Orlando Jaffrey's that first matchup, Seriously. and we're just going, or you could be a stars and a 2.0 right off the top of the bat right on that Friday. And that might, like how Bode said, will cost you on that Sunday. Is, is, uh, is the schedule predetermined, Bode? So like you just plug it in? Uh, kind of. Okay, okay, cool. Because I just want to don't, don't be surprised. You know, we're sitting there at 6 p.m. on a Friday and you're like, wait, your first game is Jaffrey's, second game is Stars, third game is New York. You're like, duh. Bro, <laughs> I want to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, that is very, very, very likely scenario. Yes, that that could happen. So yeah, it's it's for the most part predetermined for the most part. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Hasni, I know you have something prepared for us. Um, yes. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have the mic. It's your show now. Uh, go for it. All right. I mean, Sal, you know what? You've been doing such a great job when it comes to Lifted. And, you know, I've been hearing so many great things. I watch the show. I'm a fan of yours. Thank you. Um, I've called you. I've told you about it, how much I love your show. And so I said, you know what? Sal takes, you know, these interviews of everyone. Mm -hmm. But who's going to take his? Fair. Right? Fair. Yeah. So, and so I said to myself, okay, why don't we do something small for your fans? All right. And uh, hopefully when you're next time you're in Toronto, make sure you come down to the studio and we'll definitely do the real thing. But this thank is you. something, you know, you know, for your fans. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate you for kind words. I always watch I with Muna. You know that we talk about it all the time. And for the three fans that are going to be watching the rest of this video, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I'm also super no. excited to watch the, the, the output of this. So. Thank you, guys. You know, you guys have been great supporters. Salman, Hasni, you guys have all been great, great supporters of New York Union. And honestly, this is fantastic, right? Like, so so really, really looking forward to getting everybody. And I'm excited to uh, to listen to the rest of the, the interview. So Thank everybody, you, safe travel. Hope to see you in New York next week. And if anybody needs anything, you know where to reach us. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you, buddy.
Okay, there you go. It's me and you. It's, it's me, me and you, baby. buddy. It's me let's and go. you. That's it. Let's, let's like, do this. It's like so 2015 and 16 again. That's me it. and you. Let's go. <laughs> so let's do this. You know, chat with Muna style. So I'm going to start, uh, ask you some few questions, sure. give you a little rapid fire at the end. You know how it works. I know how it works. You've been there, done that. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. So, so tell me one thing. How did you start playing volleyball and when? Um, I started playing volleyball uh, in uh, 2000, I want to say seven. Uh, and it happened because, funny enough, we were playing basketball at the time. And uh, at that time, the Hayderies New York Union split had happened. And so at, Musti would take me to practice occasionally. My father would obviously, I'd always go with my father to practice. But Musti would take me to these private practices that were there, the invitee ones. And, and stick me and Taha Shivji into the net and we kind of, you know, figure it out. And, uh, and when, the, when the split happened, they actually needed us more because there was no, no players left in Union. There was about maybe 10 players. So we'd play four on four on one side of sport time. On the other side of sport time, Hadri's has a full-on practice, like seven on seven. And we're here struggling with a four on four, but that's where I got my start, actually. And in 2007, Orlando... Um, I played my first tournament on the A-team, uh, front right. And uh, yeah, that, that was my first gig. How did you do that, by the way, in that tournament? Horribly. How did you guys do it? Horribly. We, we, we got destroyed. Look, the only way I can put it was Musti was my back right. I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> that kind of tells you everything, right? <laughs> nice, nice. Did you get a chance to watch your father play? I did. I did many times, um, sometimes too many times, because uh, my father's are notoriously known to be very uh, tough, right? Tough love when it came to volleyball. Right? Off the mm. court, I mean, different, totally different guy, the nicest guy, uh, always super encouraging, always, you know, went to battle for us. But on the court, oh, my God, until today, if you see me mess up, you, you, you know I'm not looking at my dad. You know I'm not <laughs> But I got to watch him play a lot. And then I, I would go to tournaments with him, actually. When I was super young, I, I would go to tournaments with him. Um, and, you know, I would be able to watch tournaments when I was, you know, 10, 11, 12. And then I went to, and then when I started playing, um, I used to play alongside him. He used to be, I used to play front right. He used to be in front of me a lot. And then when I became back center, you know, naturally, my dad's at this point is aging out. And there, he still wants to play, obviously. So a lot of times, you know, it'd be safe in my dad because my dad would be teaching safe. And then they would be with me as the back center in practice a lot. So it was like, we, we got to live that through, man. And that was the greatest time. That was the greatest time. Yeah, I mean, I got a chance to play against your father in net. Actually, I was a netty at one point. Oh, I wow. got a chance to, yeah, I got a chance to play in front of him and what a netty he was, right? Mm -hmm. And he was coaching me at the same time, lift like this and do like this and, really? you know, so, wow. yeah, he, he's an amazing guy. Um, but everybody in the family, I mean, immediate family, played Ned. How did you become a sender? Yeah, you know. Why my, not Ned? My, like, I, say, I, actually, I started in the Ned. Yeah, you're right. Um, hmm. I think there's two, there's two parts of that. Number one is that I think my dad looked at both his sons and said, you know what, safe's got it, Salman doesn't in the Ned. <laughs> and the second was... Um, I think we needed out players. And when we needed the out players, uh, they, they, they just stuck me out and they took me out of net and said, listen, we need you to play out. And then when I started there, I just never looked back. And um, I thank Musti for that opportunity a lot because Musti put me in that position. I talk about it all the time. He gave me my first shot to play center. And I was lucky enough to be playing with my brother as a net. So it was a very good combo there. We, would, we, would, we built that for many years. But yeah, Safe was always the better netty. Um, and I always mess with safe and tell him that I made him, but it's truly, he made me like without a shadow of a doubt, he made me. Nice. nice. How did, when did you know that this is the game you really want to play? Like this became real for you. Volleyball actually became part of your, like it's a, your life. Um, I talk about it. 97. I was there when, uh, when, uh, when Fre Freddie takes that that point and you know Islanders win and I'm under the the rubble of what's that commotion that takes place at Francis Lewis High School, that made me fall in love with the game. 
instantaneously. I was six years old, seven years old. But along those lines, watching Sammy win 2002 was huge for me. Uh, I always thought of him as like, you know, he was my guy. So I always wanted to be like Sammy. And then he takes down Jaffries as a young kid, you know, like that was like, oh man, you're, you're beating the dynasty. And then I think watching Faisal and wanting to be Faisal or at least a version of him in the 2010s, I think, you know, that really pushed me through where I was like, okay, I'm going to be committed to center. I'm going to be committed to being just like this guy. And I'm going to go up against the goats, you know, of volleyball, you know, Jaffries and the, the, the stars. And, you know, I got to play all these teams time and time again, CD, Tagaro, Reblo. I got to play all these guys. I was lucky enough. Gasu with Calgary and Nundo and all these guys. I played everyone. I've been lucky enough to sit here and be like, I have played everyone. And that was my journey, man. I just told myself, listen, I am going to try to, you know, do something for New York and bring a championship back. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But that was really where I, like, all these three moments really made me fall in love with the game. Nice. New York is known for breeding the best centers of the game. <laughs> right? Uh, we had Marhum Johnny, Najaf, Kazim Fazo, Sajad Juma, Freddy. Mm -hmm. Then you came, this new hotshot kid. How did you handle the pressure? Uh, the beauty about my situation more so than any of these guys was that there was no pressure. We didn't have anything to live up to. We were unfortunately not in a negative way, but we were at the bottom of the barrel for a very long time. We were fighting for the last spot. We were not making it into playoffs every tournament we went to. So for me, it was anything that I could do to make the team progress whether that was just making the quarters even, whether that was just, you know, just winning games, big games, beating Jaffries, beating Stars. Sometimes we'd go to tournaments and win two games, but we'd beat the two best teams. That was a win for us. And that actually helped me because we were underdogs. And when you're underdogs, you never, you're never have the pressure. The pressure's off you. You know, you can shoot for the Stars, right? And you're going to be all right. So I came in guns hot and I was given freedom by... The likes of Musti, Freddy, Abbasisma, these guys, they gave me the freedom. And I had a group of guys around me that were the coolest cats who were older than me, but they were teaching me the game. Bode, I talk about Face D, Z, Mo, Abbasisma, Fundi. These guys, they were ragtag, man. They were put together also. There was no players. They're like, all right, you basketball players, go play volleyball. It was kind of more so like seven, eight, six. No pressure. And when you have no pressure, you can play the best volleyball of your life. Well said, well said. Fast forwarding to today. You moved to Orlando. Yeah. How was the fit? I think the fit now is great. I think it's, it's, it's getting, it, it took a while to, for me to understand my role. I think for the team to understand what my capabilities are. But I think now we finally found it. Uh, my first tournament, obviously, I didn't play much. My second tournament, I was able to play throughout and it was in the finals. And, you know, that was, it was a sour taste because we lost. But nonetheless, at least I was appreciative of the opportunity to be there. And now I think we've taken this last year and, and since October, at least, and we've learned how to fit each other's games. And you have to understand like that front line, they're back of their mind, right? They, they, they can, they know each other. Freddie, Ali Oscar, they know each other very well, right? They grew up in the system together. I'm the, I'm the guy who's coming from the outside. So they were, they've been extremely, extremely um, graceful in, in letting me come in and kind of work my way in. And I think I've, I found a footing, right? Like I had to watch, and I told you this, I had to watch videos of you, Jabra Alidina, Komel Kaki, Imran Murji, any Bode, any back left, back right, defensive, you know, mastermind I could find videos of, I was watching because I was like, I need to learn how to play defense. And in New York, I, I never really put that first. I put offense first. And here, that had to be my priority. And that's, that's what it's been. Nice, nice, nice. Now coming back, to New York. Sports time. First tournament back. Now the pressure starts to build, right? Now it is that you're playing for that team that everybody says is going to reach the finals or is going to win. Mm -hmm. What's your mental state? What is it saying? How are you feeling? Tell me. 
I feel very confident in 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 my capabilities there, especially right. If it was any other place, I, I maybe wouldn't be as confident. But because Sport Time is home for me, I played there for 15 years. I kind of know the ins and outs. I can like the back of my mind. So I'm very confident in my capabilities. I'm very confident in the team's capabilities. I think we're rolling on all cylinders. Our team is coming together very nicely. But I am, I am, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna be a realist, right? Like there's seven other teams or 10 other teams that are the same way, right? They're very confident. They're, they're underdogs. They have no pressure. We have more of the pressure. Um, we're coming off a loss. You know, we have probably arguably on paper, one of the best teams ever. And so when you look at position wise, right? So if you look at this there, yeah, you got to win. And for me, it's, you know, I talk about it all the time. It's finishing the story. I never thought I'd get the opportunity to finish the story. I think this, if I'm able to be there in the finals playing, if I'm given that opportunity. Um, I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to try to finish my story. I think that's the biggest thing. I want to finish my story and I want to win in New York because if you ask me, you know, growing up, and I'm sure, Husni, you did the same, you imagine at night sometimes, like, what is my first trophy going to be like? What is my last trophy going to be like? How will that scene take place? And in all of those, like, imaginary thoughts, there was only one gym that it was in, and it was sport time. So I, I see myself being a winner in sport time, and I think that would be the perfect end. And hey, I'm not saying that my career will be over, but I would contemplate it at that point to be like, hey, it's a perfect ending, man. Perfect ending. It's like um, bottom of the ninth. Yeah. Full count. <laughs> yes. Last pitch. Mm -hmm. Game is on the line. A little bit of emotion, Sal? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, that's that would be... Uh, if you give me that opportunity today in sport time, I want the ball in my hand. That's, that's what I will tell you. And, and I, I talked about it in my podcast. I have respect for all the players and teams that are coming. Um, and, uh, but, but in sport time, man, I just, I always felt like I could get to the finals or at least win. And we did multiple times there. And I think that belief will be the edge sometimes in this tournament, because there are teams that come in there and they don't perform well, or they're a little bit, you know, lost in, 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 in that, the, the Mecca and the aura and the atmosphere. And, you know, you have to be a certain type of player to win in New York or feel that your know, pressure I love every minute of it. So give it to me because I, I'll, I'll take it the bulls by the horn. And uh, I, I want that chance again. Sometimes you, when you don't have the chance anymore, you start realizing, damn, I missed that. I missed that taste, man. Give me a, give me that chance again. Right. Give me that chance one more time. Nice. So we're going to go into the rapid fire. Awesome. We're going to make it. I should told you, we're going to make the question short. I'm going to have you on, mm -hmm. you know, Thank for you. a full episode. We'll do a full one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Rapid fire. Whatever comes to your mind, let me know. Who was your mentor? That's the guy I want to be like. That's the guy who I want to play. Like, who um, was the mentor? The mentor was was many, but uh, you know, I, uh, Freddie Razamanji, my dad, uh, 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 Coaster Uncle, um, uh, I, I, Najaf. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. There's so many. Mikey. So many people were mentors to me and I'm going to probably miss some people, but they, they helped me throughout. But I would say my, my biggest coach uh, mentor was, was Najaf. Um, he, when he came back from Hadri's, he really, I really would have many conversations with him about what to do here, what to do there. Um, and he would, he really taught me the game in, in, in a mental way. Um, but if I, who did I want to be like? Sammy. Any day of the week. Sorry. Yeah. Any day of the week. The swagger was just, I wanted to be just like him. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. Good choice. And especially Najaf. I saw your interview with Najaf. I mean, yes. I mean, if there's a Mount Rushmore, he's definitely on there. You know? Yeah, for sure. Um, but amazing. Both, both, both picks are amazing. Best center all time. Uh, Faisal Banji. I, I yeah, I don't even have to think about that one. Like that's, that's Faisal. And for me, I think the cementing of Faisal uh, comes down to one thing. Yeah, he's a winner. Yeah, he had all facets of the game. But um, when I grew up, the, 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 the barometer to know that you were going to be great was beating Jaffers. Like, that was how it was growing up. Like, 
Jaffrey's were you have to be Jaffrey's to cement yourself in any way possible, right? We were the perfect villain. Perfect. And it was just like, you guys were so good. So it was like, if you can't be Jaffrey's, you're never going to get that, that respect almost, you know? And Faisal just did it every time. So for oh, me, yeah. like, that was just, you're the GOAT, man. You're the GOAT. It was painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Best friend center of Ooh. all time. Oh. Ooh, that's a good one, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to throw curveballs here now. Front center only, right? Best friend center of all time. Come on. Um, I think um, uh, by the end of his career, if, if Kizer continues to play there, it will be him. If he continues to play front line, I think it'll be Kizer. I mean, he might be end up in the back line now with 2.0. So I'll, I'll kind of keep him out of this for now. Um, but I would probably say, uh, does Monaco count? Front center? No, he was more of a back center than a front center. Uh, come on, come on! There were so many good ones. There's, I mean, there's too many. There's too many good ones. You know, I mean, many. there's legends that played the game. Yeah, Nazir Talio, Sajad Kimji, um, Ahmad Sumar. I mean, the list goes on of the great front centers that have played the game that you have played against also. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, to me, it's a uh, toss-up. There's so many good ones, but for now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, uh, I mean, again, we don't know the end of everyone's career. For now, I'm going to say Ahmad Sumar. Ahmad Sumar. Yeah, best yeah, front center I've, I've watched. Uh, originator of a V. Played with Sammy in the early beginning of his career. Hit the net at on demand. Hit the putty on demand. Placings, floating, with defense. I mean, the guy had it all. He had it all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Best netty of all time. Ding. Uh, the best netty of all time. Um... I would say, I would say Adil Molidina. I think Adil Molidina was to play alone in this era is very difficult. And to be lifting to multiple people in this era perfectly is very difficult. So I got to give it to him. And he's played with so many good centers, Shanu and Faisal and you guys. And it's just like, the guy is the cream of the crop, man. Cream of the crop. You can't go wrong with that, though, man. You can't. You can't. He's Mr. Dependable. Yeah. Best defensive player of all time. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Hussein Gigi. Uh, to me, the, the, the there were goal. many more. There were. Oscar Uncle was awesome. And there were so many. Baya, I mean, obviously, amazing. Like all these guys, man, so good. Um, but I would say Hussein Gigi. I've always said Hussein Gigi was the best defender I've ever seen. But I'm not going to say that, you know, by the end of some people's careers, they, they won't be up there with you. Um, there's Kumel Kaki, there's Jaber Lidina. There's a lot of guys coming up still. So, but as of right now, yeah. Yeah, that's name GG, man. And, 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 to be, and a, close, a close second, if he continues to win, will be Jaber. Good choice, good choice. And thank you, by the way, for those kind words. Um, best tournament you have ever played, best memory, best game, or best shot, whichever one. Give me one. Uh, 2019 uh, Faisal Banji Memorial Tournament, uh, a point away from, from beating Stars in the third game. That was the best time I've had playing volleyball, uh, probably. Uh, that was uh, the closest we've ever come. And that was the most fun team I was a part of. That team right there. I mean, if you watch that game, you watch those rallies. I mean, you watch that that entire tournament. That was, oof, that was it. I mean, there are a lot of close seconds. There's uh, the Calgary game where we were new and we played Calgary for the first time and we almost, you know, we beat them like 21-1 or something. That was a fun time. Um, we played, uh, you know, playing against you guys and winning those games, some of those games, some crazy comebacks in those games. Uh but yeah, I, I would say that was number 2019 finals, uh, game three. Uh, that was it, man. That was the one that got away. If there was a book written about you, mm -hmm. what would it be called? 
a biography. What would it be called? I'll give you two choices. Okay. I'll make life easy for you. Mm -hmm. First choice, Ekta Tiger. <laughs> and choice number two, Tiger Zindahe. Um, Which of the two would you call it? Uh, well, one. I would, I would call it one. Ekta Tiger. Ekta yeah. Tiger. Nice. Yeah, I would call it nice. that. Yeah. No, I mean, if, yeah, that, that's what I would call it. Yeah. If you give me those two choices, yeah, that's what I would call it. <laughs> um, what's the future of Salman Karmali? Where do you see Salman five years from now? Um, what is his future? I'm 33 years old. And I don't think I'm finished yet. Uh, again, I, I still believe that my career has a story to tell. But I think for me, um, my story maybe not isn't isn't on the court per se. If it doesn't happen that you know I don't get an opportunity to to play again for a championship or whatever, that's okay. I think I've come to terms with that. I think for me, it's more so what I can do off the court with lifted, with the kids, uh, the growing the game aspect of it. What you know, you and I are kind of doing right to grow the game. Um, I feel like that part of my career may actually be more important than the first tail end of the first part of my career. And so I, I kind of look forward to that. Um, but am I still going to play? Yeah. Am I still going to be a part of all this? Yeah. Um, and am, am, am I going to try to try to still win? Of course. Do I still think I have it in me? Definitely. So I'm not saying you won't see me around uh, like in a final or somewhere down the line or, but if tomorrow, you know, my calling is to mentor, to coach, to bring up youth or whatever. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in for all of that. As long as I'm a part of the game and I can bring uh, some sort of, you know, positivity and a vibe and love and a passion, I'm for it. I'm 100% for it. Yeah, so mine, a lot of kids look up to you. Um, you know, you're, you're a mentor to them. You know, a lot of kids, you know, a lot of kids have come up to me and you know told me great things about you. Um, it's it's amazing what you're doing, your podcast, um, how you are on the court, off the court. I mean, definitely, people love you. We love you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, yes. Good jobs, man. That's my. That was my final question. You're done until until I see you in in the studios in toronto uh yeah we'll, we'll go more in depth there's so much more yeah. on the table to talk oh, about yeah. Too um, much. but i try to be as candid as possible and i by the way guys i didn't know about the questions i didn't know about anything uh yeah. but husnain thank you for being so kind to to ask me questions that were you know i could answer with that with a straight face and not have to dodge anything um <laughs> so you put me in a great position you're a great interviewer but thank you thank you i appreciate you even taking the time out to do this um you didn't have to but I, but I thank you for that. And, um, and yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited to see you finally back on the court. And uh, I'm excited. We're just, what, a couple of days away, man. A couple of days away. I'm going to see you on that court, man. And you're going to hear that boom oh. all the way from the fifth court to the first court. First court. Then you know you're at sports time. You know? 100%. 100%. Then it's game on. 100%. Thank you so much, man. Uh, again, kudos to what you guys are doing with Chai with Muna. Always watch all your shows. So, uh, you know. I, I've always continued to support. Thank you for your support to Lifted. And thank you to Bode and the organizers for allowing me and Hasnain to do this. And for, again, Hasnain, for you taking the time out today. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, buddy. Anytime. Good night, everybody. I love you all. We'll see you uh, uh, in, in a couple of days. Anything you want to say, Hasnain, to say goodbye? Que manacho, kasaka, you know, the normal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I done that in the beginning, right? Assalamu alaikum, yali madad, namaste, sasya kala, dab, kima nacho, kasakai, kero wale, kim cho. And thank you for watching, you know, our collab podcast. Thank you to New York. Um, inshallah, we'll see you all there soon. Safe travels. And uh, do whatever you want to do, but don't bother your mata and your pita and your bharat mata. And that's it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you guys soon.